So I just wanted to show you uh, what we're up against here. The mortar that we started with, that we did the inside uh, fireplace and, and uh, started the pillars with, without well, having problems getting it because of the whole COVID thing. So uh, I don't even know if the factory's making it anymore or, if or, or, or what's going on. So we haven't been able to get it. So we've, we've gone back to the old school uh, blend of uh, type S masonry cement and mixing it with sand which is the way I used to do it anyways but that uh, the product we were using quickcrete uh, veneer stone mortar was uh, I was just trying it out on this job and I liked it I mean it's, it, it was creamy it was sticky it was it uh, strong um, but uh, but we can't get it so we're back to the old, old way here um, and it's and it's a little different in the application. Uh, it's 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 harder to get the mortar to uh, not dry out quick <clears throat> because I think the other stuff has some uh, has some polymers or something in it that you know some proprietary blend or whatever that they put in there to keep it from. Uh, you know, keep it workable, keep the plasticity up for for uh, a longer period of time. So this blend here is, uh, you know, it's, it's two to one sand to masonry cement. So, you know, I, I, I've been mixing up about one five gallon pail of sand to a half pail of uh, of mortar. And, and you want to make it pretty uh, consistent because your color will change if you, you know, if you've got three quarters of a pail of mortar or one quarter and you start getting off like that so I just draw a line right on the pail and fill it up to that point every time uh, it, just to keep it consistent and uh, so the thing with this mortar here you know is it's two to one um, I mix it up super super stiff I don't mix it in the mixer because I'm only mixing one batch or one bucket at a time and one bucket seems to get us about uh, probably about five square feet I guess five or six square feet maybe seven um, somewhere in there but uh, you know if I mix it in the mixer my paddles are old my wipes are old on the mixer and what happens is I, I lose three quarters of it in the uh, I lose three quarters of it in the mixer and uh, so it's just a waste so I just you know just quick and easy and, and efficient and everything just mix up a little bit like that in the wheelbarrow and so I mix it up pretty stiff this is uh, actually looser than I usually do and it's you know I don't have a problem with it but if you um, are a first timer or something or not really familiar with the process uh, you want to probably mix it up and keep it in two batches mix it up stiff and then keep your stiff stuff in the back I think I said this before too keep your stiff stuff in the back of the mud pan this is that right there and, and I can't tell you uh, through a video you know what the you know it's to what to look for it's hard to describe the consistency you want probably um, you can see I'm shaking this and it's not really flattening out uh, and it's kind of holding its shape it's kind of holding its shape when you plop it down like that it's pretty stiff what you want to be able to do is cut a roll off it like that and then put it on the wall you can see like like I got this rock going on here I think I think that's where that one's going so you want to use your stiff stiff mud for the bed and mud um, I'll put one on here in a second and show you. So anyways, I keep my keep your stiff mud in the back, keep your loose mud up front, and loosen this up pretty good. This is, my loose mud is, could actually use a little, a little more water in it. And you don't want it soupy though. So this is kind of a thing you're gonna have to play around with until you get it just right. Uh, and it's just a matter of experience. You know, I've been doing this 30 years and it's, it's not the easiest thing, but you can do it. But, uh, so you can see this mud here. I loosened it up pretty good, and this is my parging mud. What I'll parge the wall with and the back of the stones. And you can see it's totally different. It's not holding its shape like that. You shake it on the trowel, it flattens right out. Like so. And, uh, and you plop it down. It's, it's loose. So that's what you want. So I'm going to put this 
camera up here and I'll show you, uh, see if we can get you. I don't know if we can get it. Oh, yeah, that's probably not. Let's see. We're gonna take some of your loose mud, and, and, the, and the thing with this whole thing, with this whole process, is uh, time. You, you have very little time to mess around with. So you gotta, you know, I get my stones ready, make sure it's ready to go in, parge up the wall, parge the back of the stone. Sometimes I'll even put a little dab of mortar on the wall, like in the middle of the stone, and then leave a slight hollow in the mortar that's on the back of the stone, and. Uh, it kind of creates a suction effect when you put it on so uh, timing is the essence because as I've said before the, the water starts getting absorbed out of the mortar instantly the minute it hits the wall and uh, it doesn't matter if you spray it down or what unless that wall is soaking wet it's gonna do it it's just gonna pull the mortar the water right out of the mortar so you, you don't have long to mess around with it I'm, I'm talking probably you know 30 seconds a minute before it really starts uh, you know pulling the water out bad and it gets crumbly and you don't want to disturb it after that after it starts doing that you want it creamy when you when it's set um, otherwise it won't adhere to the wall so I'll uh, put one on here and, and uh, see if you guys can see what I'm talking about so you take take your loose mud get it in the back of your trowel and you only want to spread for the basically the amount of rock that you have going on. You don't want to overspread. So this is my next rock. It's already cut. All ready to go. Going right in there. Just like that. So what I do, what I'll do, is I'll just trace kind of roughly. Roughly trace where that rock is going. That way you don't overspread your mortar. I mean, a little overspreading is fine. So then, take your mortar, like this. And it won't hurt to put it on maybe, you know, quarter inch thick. Like so. So that's your loose mortar. Take your bed mortar. Take a roll of it like I just showed you. Get a nice roll of it right on your trowel. Take a little dollop like this. It's all proportional to the size of the rock you're putting on. Like that. Take your rock, take your pardon mortar, your loose mortar. Take that again, like that. You want to leave a little, a little hollow. Make sure you pack this in good, or, or parge the back good, so there's contact with all the every bit of the rock on the back. And the other thing you want to kind of keep shims. See, I'm already taking too long, but I, it's all right. You. Uh, you want to keep shims handy in case it settles. If your if your bed mortar is good, it shouldn't settle too much on you. But check for depth off the wall. Like so I'll stuff them. Shim in it just in case. So as I've said before, don't worry about the don't worry about the mortar that's squeezing out here. We can clean that all up and we'll uh, you know we'll uh, wipe it down with a sponge so it doesn't make a mess so so th the other hardest thing of this is putting these on is uh, 
is, is getting the depth off the wall right and like I said before we've been running about two inches on most of this stuff um, so you got to put the right amount of stone or right amount of mortar behind the stone um, so you're not fighting it so you're not making a complete mess and, and you know if you put you know inch and a half worth of mortar behind this rock on a, on a one inch rock you're already at two and a half and then you're pushing it in trying to get it to two you're blowing mortar out everywhere um, so anyway so as you're kind of filling in the gaps here the, behind behind the stones take your trowel and push that loose mortar against the wall just like that that creates that way you have a, a constant loose uh, a constant bond between the loose mortar and the wall because this is already starting to dry out here if I go if I scrape along this wall like this you see how it's it pulls it away it's pulling it away I don't know if we can see you can see that it's it's, cr it's crumbly it's pulling away that's not what you want you want to keep loose mortar work it into the mortar that is drying out on the wall like so same thing on this side, take your trowel and just kind of run it up like this. And you can see this is already, this is setting up up here. You can see the moisture being pulled out of the, a lot of this excess. If I don't have a rock to go right on there right now, I'll take my trowel and just kind of get rid of it. That way it doesn't set up and uh, cause problems later, built out or whatever, if you don't get back to that spot for a while. So anyways, run that up like that. Same thing here, there we go. That's why I was saying it's good to mark out on the wall where your rock is going. So anyways, uh, I'd make sure, make sure this is completely packed with fresh mud, loose mud. Just keep using the loose mud on there, like so. Turn it up the back, like that. Good, good, good. And you will get a little, no matter what, you're gonna get some shrinkage. So you can see this right in there that's a shrinkage crack and it's just from the moisture being pulled out so take just as you're kind of screwing around here and laying rocks and stuff just take it doesn't hurt to take the joiner see this one hasn't done it yet but it doesn't hurt to take the joiner and just run along that seam where the where the mortar meets the wall just take that and uh and like i said these uh, i've said this before so i'm just repeating myself but just take this mortar pack it right in just like that and just leave it alone you know it, it'll uh when you come back to this and join it it'll be uh it'll be all set up scrape it out sponge it off and you're good to go so so let's see here there we go so that's it so we're, we're we're gaining i'm gonna zoom out here uh i will climb down and show you we're going around the front here with the windows. So I make up a lot of rocks, you know, previously, the night before, make up a lot, get them in set in here dry. You don't want to get too high up uh, or too many depending on the rock below or dependent on the rock below um, because they, they change slightly as you lay them from when you set them out dry. So, you know, if you get too far ahead of yourself there, you'll they'll be off. They'll start getting off one way or another and your joints will get either smaller bigger or whatever and and then you're remaking rocks that you already made so don't get too far ahead of yourself but it does help to have some so it does help to have some made up <clears throat> yeah. so that's where we are that's where we just were laying up so we got front of that of course the walls in the way and all that but but uh so i got the rest of that to the goal i think it's about i measured it up last night it's about 200 feet on the front of this house left to go um and then i got a couple pillars in the back that we kind of jumped up, we abandoned them because the landscapers were back there putting their pavers in and retaining walls and all that so, so i'll update you further on down the line thanks mike